Hi, what's up, y'all? It's popping in today. About to react to this video by Chronicle Speaks. It's titled Monique Shades D.L. Hughley, and he loses it. Complete breakdown of their fallout. So she was on Club Shay Shay. There are several videos that covers this whole ordeal, but this channel uh, goes over Monique. Uh, what she initially said, uh, D.L. Hughley's response. Apparently, he's like fat shaming her or something like that. That's <laughs> just so stupid. And then uh, why they got beef or whatever. It goes over there. I didn't even know they was beefing. I don't understand why they're beefing. This is all just goofy, but but sure. Let, let's get into the tea and see what's happening. Let's watch. Comedian Monique has lit a flame that has your boy D.L. Hughley burning, baby. Y'all might be wondering to yourself. And what did D.L. do? And with the way we're Stella. about to break it down, I'm like, <laughs> Oh, these two me. have had a beef that has gone on a few years. It's been jabs at the spouses, the kids, even the dog got it. Down to the sheep dog. So Monique recently appeared on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp, and it's something about either that chair or the liquor that will activate you because as soon as that truth serum kicks in, baby, it hits you like bam. Monique sat down and vented her grievances <laughs> about Oprah Winfrey, oh. Tyler Perry, mm. Kevin Hart, mm. Tiffany Haddish. Oh, look at baby about Kevin. Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry. Oh, she was around him when he was, you know, up and coming. Evan Hart, Tiffany Haddish, and it wouldn't be a show unless she went in on the one man that she's had issues with Tyler over Perry. the years. And that's fellow comedian D.L. Oh. Hughley. And when D.L. heard what she had to say, he went off. We are going to break this story down sure and so much more, but before we do... Please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any news regarding this story and so much more. Now let's get back into it. So Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp has been a place where celebrities have felt comfortable sitting down, having a safe place to vent while we all get to sit sideline and watch it all go down. The latest to appear on the podcast is Monique. And baby, when I say she broke it down like a shotgun, mm. sis broke it down. She spoke about Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> the things that are going on between Taraji and Oprah. Them. We've all been privy to all of these stories, but many of you may not know her issue that she has with D.L. Hughley. So it all started a few years back. Monique appeared on D.L. Hughley's radio show, and that particular day, he was not there. While on air, his co-host asked Monique if she would like to play a game. Monique was like, sure, I like playing games. What's up? The Is game was called game? Would You Rather? And in that game, they asked her the following question. Monique, would you rather your husband have protected sex with Lee Daniels or unprotected sex with Superhead? <laughs> this is a wild now, question. Now, as y'all are watching right now, haven't That's heard this story, y'all going, oh, they doing the same thing in the studio. They going, oh, okay, that is exactly what happened. Monique was like, what kind of game is this? I called D.L. Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby, yeah. Y'all some bullshit. Huh? That's how he responds. Yeah. Did he know it was you? Yes, he, because they called him to tell him, no, Monique's going to be calling. Right. Like, this, it was getting crazy. Right. Mm. I'm like, just let me get on the phone with my brother, right? Yeah. Mm. Hey, DL, yeah. I said, listen, I just got off the phone with your team, and they wanted to play this game, would you rather? And it was, like, st stupid. Like, ask me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Stephens, and his exact words, well, that's how we do it. I said, Dio, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? Like I said, that's just how we do it. So it is what it is. So Monique was like, look, I'm about to call my attorney. I Girl. need to scrap this. And Dio was like, all right, it's scrap. And they really didn't hear too much from each other. Okay, that is a weird question, but girl, it's, it's, it's not that deep. I would be like, what the fuck? I would have checked the, the people who asked me. Like, what type of stupid ass question is this next? Anyway, well, what's the other question? Okay, y'all gonna keep asking stupid shit? All right, let's move on. Like, and, and left it at that. Or after that, that was up until they were supposed to have a show together in L.A. And D.L. was like, nah, I'm not going to it because she's too problematic. Well, time goes on and D.L. says people change. Let me go ahead and give her another chance. So they have a show scheduled together at the acclaimed Fox Theater in Detroit. I'm going to play one of my previous videos to catch you all up and I'll be right back.
This Monique and D.L. Hughley saga seems to not be ending anytime song. soon. As you know, both comedians believe that they were to headline at the Fox Theater in Detroit this past weekend, but when Monique got there, she realized that her contract had been breached and she was no longer the headliner. She decided to go on with the show but speak about what happened during her set. D.L. followed behind her as the headliner and said he pretty much had to put out the fire and entertain a crowd with a burnt stage that she had left. Oh, okay, wait, what, Monique? She had left. She is messy. She's messy. I don't really care for her. I feel like there is some validity in the things that she says, and I'm sure she has faced discrimination and unfair treatment i'm sure all of that is valid to a certain degree but i feel like she completely leaves out how problematic she is i feel like there is some truth in people saying that she's difficult it, it's kind of giving difficult and why would you get on this stage and call this man a bitch whatever issue you have with him why not sort that out like backstage why get on stage and like embarrass him like this and he has to go up next after you and you call him a bitch, you call him out his name, like you doing too much. Girl, she got a mask. And you think that I don't have a dick that ain't my position, nigga? Not you roasting this man. So when I leave this motherfucker, the headliner has left. Wow. Monique said it was all a lie, and we all know Monique is not afraid of calling folks out. So D.L. Hughley took to his Instagram a way to and posted a things. picture of Monique's That's character in the movie Precious, and he said all you have to do is check the order of names on the ticket stub from last night, and you'll see who's confused. Against my better judgment, over the objections of my team, and four other occasions where I said no, I decided to take a chance and work with Monique. Mm. Oprah was a problem. Tyler Perry mm. was a problem. Yes. Charlamagne was a problem. This is the, also the other issue I have with, with Monique. Everybody is the problem except her, according to her. So it's like, hmm, hmm. Problem. Steve Harvey was the problem. Lee Daniels was the problem. Netflix was the problem. Now it's my turn. At some point, it can't be everyone else. It's you. Lesson learned. I didn't have anything against Monique. People pay a lot of money to laugh, not to hear about your contract. Right. The role you played in Precious turned out to be an autobiography. Ooh. I wonder who's next. Daryl Lynn Hughley, and the reason why he said his whole name is because she said, I wonder what the DL stands for, insinuating that he might gay? possibly be a down low brother. Wow. Now, then she responds yes. to this and she said, The fact that you point the people to the ticket stubs for the order of names versus to your contract implies that you don't have a contract that shows that you're the headliner like I do. Either show your contract or shut up. Stop messing with people who have never messed with you and considered you a comrade in comedy. But I thank you, DL, because you're the reason why I fight for my people like I do. Anytime you open for the Kings of Comedy and I was the headliner for the Queens of Comedy and you think you should close the show over me is an example of the bias that black women have to deal with in the business. I won't even discuss the award. And then still, instead of posting his contract like Monique said, DL posts all of these other things showing where he thinks he's the headliner. And he says, answer me this. When have you ever seen the headliner at the bottom and mentioned last? The confusion is with whoever gassed her up on premium octane. Now back to the Stogian bourbon. Y'all ain't upping up my Sunday. Hashtag Team DL. Hashtag talk to your people. Monique said, if you're doing things legally, then show your contract. Not posters, not ticket stubs. Your contract, sir. And please know that no different than Tyler, Oprah, Steve. I still love you, brother. But I have to love our community and myself enough to tell the truth. Also, anyone who comes on stage learn because they may have Now had he's your brother and you love him. He was just a bitch-ass nigga. He was a bitch-ass, pussy-ass, down-low-ass nigga when he was on stage. This is the other reason why I don't fuck with her. Because she want to hate sweet babies us and shit and, and act like you know i'm doing this for black women and da, da, da. but you be hella disrespectful bro girl too much alcohol to drink and need a support dog like yourself is a person that has the type of concern that should keep them from talking negatively about anyone 
because you know the issues that you're dealing with in order to need a support dog. So I will roast your ass on stage, but I'm going to love you in life as I'm fighting for you too. Despite the disrespect, you frequently show your own people, but when you're allies mm. with people who put money over integrity, then that says everything. In the words of Spike Lee, wake up. DL showed a deal memo showing that he was a headliner, but according to Monique, that's not valid without signatures. She showed a contract, but DL said that that's not valid because it's from her company. But legal analysts have said yeah, let's that this get back is to the Shay Shay the industry shit. and is valid because it does have the signatures or initials from Monique and the promoter. So again, there was a lot of back and forth going on between the two, but the common denominator in it all, in my in opinion, seems to be the promoter. And we have not heard anything from the promoter saying exactly what happened. Through the years, I've watched DL speak ill of me. Through the years. I never knew me, I never knew DL Hughley had a problem with me. But when Cass and Ayola grew, he forgot to put DL Hughley in the group. Mm -hmm. Through the years, I was bitter. I was dangerous with what I was doing, saying that it was inequality. My husband didn't know what he was doing. This went on through the years. I was unloved, all of these things. And I said to myself, I'm going to see you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see you. I didn't go on nobody's show. I didn't say nothing to nobody, but I knew the time would come that I would see him. We were scheduled to do a show in Los Angeles. I was the headliner of that show. His name was on it, then his name came off. I didn't question it. But I knew I'm a Sam, right? Originally. Okay, now we have a show in Detroit. Contractually, I was the headliner. D.L. Hughley posted a memo. Now, when you signed your deal for the Ravens, did you sign a contract or a memorandum? I signed a contract. You see how you say that? Like anybody that knows good business, you signed contract. the memo was saying this is what I would like, right. but the contract is saying this is what right. it is, okay? Yes. He put out a memo to our community, and that touched me a little different because I was saying, why would you lie to our babies? Because now they're thinking, oh if they send somebody a memo, that's what they're supposed to get, mm -hmm. okay? I was contractually signed to go as the headline. Right. You mean you go last? D.O. Hughley didn't come into the building until 9.30. Now, contractually, I said I had to be on stage by 9.30. Because if the show starts at 8, I refuse to keep an audience waiting. Right. That is disrespectful to the audience. Correct. When I went out on that stage, Shannon, I made sure everything I said, he heard me. Because now you're here, and I'm going to say it to you. Mm -hmm. And I said some things on that stage that... I said he was cowardly. And some folks said, how could you say that? How could you do that? And then I posted some things to say, this is what I meant. See, you came after my husband. And when you had a chance to fix it, when you had a chance to say, Mo, my bad, you know, we only right. went down like that. Right. You told me it is what it is. And until he's brave. You said that his people did that. He didn't do that. And he, when he was saying it is what it is, that sounds more so like, okay, that's just how they talk. They act stupid. They say shit for views or ratings or whatever. Because it wasn't that deep. It what is it some actual tea behind the scenes that, we, that we're not privy to? Like, why are you so pressed over that comment that he didn't even make? His people made it. Girl, bye. <laughs> and courageous enough to say this is what really happened, y'all. Y'all have never known me to be no shit star. She got Folks have never known me to go over and kick a sandwich out of somebody's hand that's hungry. But what people do know is if you kick me, you do damn if I'm going to kick you back. Right. Because that's fair play. Right. So there was one left out the pack. And when you have people that continually don't take accountability, that's why you see us in the state of affairs we're in. Well, Club Shay Shay is getting messier and messier. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um, so yeah. Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy ass video Maybe. with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that works out that much in game weight unless every crunch you do has got cap in the front of it. But All apparently, right. she goes on Club Shay Shay right. and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. And uh, uh, my co host, Jasmine Sanders, played a game that we play all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she said she got off, she called me. Monique did, and she said I was very dismissive, like, huh? Well, it's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints, I listened to her, and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't. And because he rectified it. She's a liar. Like, what are we talking about? It, it also befuddles uh. the shit out of me how somebody who has a comedian talks as much shit about everybody else as she does. She has the temerity to be offended about anything as much shit as you say about people. Then she encouraged everybody, uh, allegedly it stems from the fact that I used to always talk shit about her on video after video, and she encouraged her sweet babies to look at the video and find them. Do that. Do exactly what she says. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence, evidence of that, because Monique is a fucking liar. Mm. And the only way that you get people to hear you is if, if they're tuned into your frequency. Like, they have to be tuned into your frequency. Um, and I think one of the things that happens is there's so many of my bad things. No matter what your no matter what your attitude is, I'm not gonna hear what you're saying if your energy's kind of weird. Like, like you can't mm -hmm. you say things about Whoopi and then you're calm. You get into it with Steve and then you're calm. You got into it with Lee Daniels and then you're calm. And there is, I think, a price to pay uh, in terms of people's perceptions of you when it's been that 
uh, for that. When I think if you lead a movement, it can't, you, it can't be for your benefit or solely for your benefit. Let's do this for that. Listen, somebody giving you that much money, whether you like think that's a lot comparatively or not, that's more than most people make in their life. Listen, nobody makes half million dollars when I was working. Nobody. Not Kobe Bryant. Not nobody does that for half. And so what you're asking people to do, some people are trying to figure out how to keep the $7 to keep Netflix on. So to me, if you're going to strike out for a cause, there has to be a reciprocal value for everybody. There has to be something in it for them and not primarily in it for you. So that, that was my problem. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking shit about some uh, alleged contract dispute we had. Mm. Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife. This bra even brought out my daughter's personal trauma. My daughter was molested and Monique oh, bought that remember, shit out. And t- it told the world that I allowed my daughter to be raped in front of me. The lying motherfucker. When you start oh, addressing remember. the character of the man. And that was love. From what I when recall. When you really look into what is happening. The daughter ain't got nothing when to do a with man that. says, I was not strong enough to defend my daughter against a really, really good friend of mine because I didn't want to jeopardize the friendship. Though he apologized, you have to ask yourself really what that. kind of demons is that man dealing with that he couldn't stand even if the they're, of his... Even if, if what she's saying is true, that's just so low to drag his daughter into this situation. And what if you're reigniting whatever trauma she has associated with this like that's really fucked up just because you're trying to make a point and and paint him in a negative light like that's so fucked up i don't fuck with her his child of his child but that same man goes on his radio show and talks about people as if he was sitting in the meetings as if he was making their life decisions as if his opinion mattered in their choices. So when I say, listen, y'all, it was important for me, for me, to make that post because there are so many little girls out there with daddies like DL. She knows she was lying. And it only stopped when everybody from front of my family checked her. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see? Monique doing, you won't ever see a, her with her family, videos with her children or grandchildren, because nobody fucks Grand with children? me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't fuck with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real? Ooh. Except your daddy, who you apparently have to pay. Ooh. And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies, not daddies who get paid by their daughters. You'll never, you know what else you won't see Monique doing? Telling jokes. Monique, uh, if she just spends as much time actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. Mm. It got the worst reviews of any Netflix special in history. Because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has grievances. You never see her being a human being. You never yeah. see her being sweet and warm to people. Except when she's using it to butter somebody up to get something. I'm sorry, I have to agree with him on this. Whenever I hear Monique's name brought up, it's always her complaining about someone or exposing somebody or, you know, talking about how people have done her wrong. Like, that is all I ever hear when her name is brought up. I don't hear anything positive. It's just always everybody's the problem. This person did this to me. This is wrong. That is wrong. And again, I'm not saying that, you know, she hasn't been done wrong. I'm not saying that there is no truth in what she's saying, but it's just how she comes across. I just don't, I don't like her character based on what I see online. Obviously, I don't know this woman in real life. I don't know the full story, but from what I see, it just seems like she's the issue, bro. There's a reason why everywhere she go, shit starts. Everywhere she goes. How is it that and I don't know what the consensus is. I don't know what people are saying. This might be a hot before? take. I, I was on the road with it. I get it every goddamn yeah, whatever. way. Whatever, that's how I feel. Look at my schedule versus yours. See how much I'm going. And I still manage to have a relationship that I cherish with my children. Can you say the same? You can't. It's all you do is talk about your grievances and who did you wrong. There's a reason you're fought by yourself. There's a reason you got to pay a man to love you. Oh. It's sad. There's an old ad that says you can't buy love. It's a shame, Monique, that you probably always will have to. What I need to do is hear from you. And they're probably not gonna (laughs) 
be on uh, D.L. Hughley's side because he did fat shame her and it's probably going to be this narrative that, oh, he's he's just, you know, bullying her. Or he's whatever the fuck people like to say. Um, so maybe people are with Monique on this, but I don't know. I, I just don't. I don't trust her. <laughs> I don't trust her and I feel like she never seems to take ownership of what she has done or how she's wrong in any situation is always them, them, them. They're all wrong. And these are all her peers. So these are not people who are hating on her or they just want to see her lose just because she's a black woman. This, this I feel like this is the narrative that she paints. And it's like, bro, like there has to be more to it and everybody can't be the problem all the time. So I don't know. I don't know. Some, something's up with her though. Y'all let me know what y'all think though. Let me know what other videos you want to watch and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.